Um, yeah. So be very aware of that if you do get short stacks. You still have a very nice situation. Uh, we'll, we'll also talk through live tiles as well once I, I stop recording. Uh, sorry, sorry, people at home, but it's too fucking valuable for you. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching this for free, probably, so don't get grumpy. Um, yeah, and especially with live tells, you'll have some really sick situations where someone will like open on your right, say they're on the cutoff, you have like deuces for like 20 bigs or like, you know, sixes or whatever. You'll be able to look at them. I'll, I'll, I'll teach you a couple of things and you'll be able to gauge roughly whereabouts for most people where they are in their range. And uh, that is in tournaments invaluable. It's yeah. incalculably, insanely valuable. It's, um, yeah, you, you, every decision is just completely distorted and changed based wow. on uh, if you have live reads on people or not. How exciting. It is extremely exciting, man. And no one fucking knows about it. It's so good. Um, anyway, so when you are when you are short stacked, you want to be you want to be really, really conservative with your chips if you have big edges on other people. Um, and yeah, just just remembering that even though something is obviously very profitable, you just it doesn't matter. Just leave yeah. it. Okay. Walk on. Because we get ace king. Like Love ace. ace. Finally, a good hand. I don't know, I can't remember if I had any. Yeah, I fucking know that. And folds around, thank you. Oh, typical. Fucking typical. Man, this is what, that, that, that actually is something I, I do enjoy about playing, playing live when I, I played one, two, those, those few times, is that all of the stereotypes that revolve around poker, like all the memes of poker, they, they still exist. Yeah. I love it. Uh, so this, I would probably off this stack size just fold again. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'd much rather have Ace Ten off than Ace Five suited. Okay. Um, yeah. Even though, obviously, if you're playing like 300 big steep, I'd rather have Ace Five suited. Um, when when you're shallow, just as a, a normal theoretical thing, so you, you want to have big cards. Yeah. Frequent strength. Yeah, um, because big cards hit top pairs more. And we like top pairs when we have 20 bigs because they stack second pairs. Cool. Cool. Uh, I assume we didn't play that 5 4 off? Nope. No, uh, goodness me. Send it soon. No. Alina. No, ally. Ally. King Jack of Black. Uh, I can't remember. I think I might fly there. Yeah. Flooding definitely not terrible. Uh, for people at home, by the way, this HUD, we don't know where the fuck it came from because <laughs> he wasn't playing with the HUD at the time. So I think this poker co-pilot thing is using the hands that it has of this person of this tournament or maybe the hands that it has of this person total. No idea. Um, so we're pretending this doesn't exist. Obviously, if we knew he had a PFR of six, that's just burning money. Because yeah. 6% of hands is uh, not many hands. Uh, in general, against the average kind of loose-ish player, this is fine. It's not great, but it is absolutely, it's absolutely fine to call. Um, mm. Because it's, it's going to be making quite a lot of money on average. Yeah. Um, but I'd say it's just on that line of like, it's just making enough money that we want to actually be playing it in this situation. Um, in comparison to the other ones that we could run into. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Good. Mm. Check that. The, the cool thing about people checking back in this spot is it's almost always ace high. Yeah. It's like it's probably like seventy percent ace high. So yeah, lo loving the bet. Just got a bet. I didn't. I didn't see what size you bet actually. So you just got a better size that ace high is gonna fold to. Uh, so you bet. You bet pretty big. I, I'd okay. say you don't. You don't need to go that big. Okay. Uh, just because if he does have something like pocket eights, he ain't, he ain't folding. Uh, if he does have something like pocket threes, he is folding. And uh, if he has something like ace queen, ace king, ace jack, ace nine, oh, sorry, ace, ace eight, et cetera, um, then he is folding as well. So because there's kind of that polarity in what he's folding to, what he's folding and what he's definitely not folding, mm -hmm. um, you just choose a size that will fold him off all the stuff that he's definitely folding. And don't worry about like the pocket eights and stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll probably bet like, there's like 540 in the pot. So I'll probably just bet like 199, something like that. Something that bets that looks kind of big. Uh, in, in these One stakes, of my friends told me that. Oh, you're gone. 
Sorry, what were you saying? Well, with with uh, bet sizing, one of my friends told me once he plays a lot of Zoom, and he was like, if you if you bet like one nine five, that looks scarier than two oh five. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That that's huge, huge, huge. It's it's a big thing in live as well, and it's sometimes like you want to look scary with a bluff, and sometimes you want to look scary with a valley hand. So yeah, and it depends on the person, depends on the spot. Um. So it really is an intuitive thing. But it really blows my mind when people are playing online and they, instead of having their stack sizes in front of them, they just have the amount, like they have this software that changes it into big blinds or maybe the, the site doesn't. Yeah. So they're like, oh, I'll bet 2.4 big blinds, but they don't know how much they're betting in terms of actual chips. And yeah, that's, for me, that that's just burning so much EV because yeah. it's like make the size that looks big or look confident. Yeah. Confident yeah. sizes are a thing. Yeah. Um, like if, if you're live and you, you want to bluff, but you're just like, I want to bluff small. So it just like definitely folds ace high. Just pick up like, just like literally I'll, I'll do this. I'll be sitting at the table with like 100 chip. So it's like one can of like 100 chip. I'm like, hmm. I'll literally go, hmm. And then pick up like a 50 chip and then I'll pick up to like a stack of ones. And it's like, Bruh. yeah, just do that. Just like, I know they're going to be calling with whatever shit, but if they have ace high, they're folding because no yeah. one's going to think that's a bluff. Um, I like that. Yeah, you, you probably saw me do, do some stuff relatively similar to that when we were playing. Yeah. I saw you do some weird If you like the video, then like the video. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember what any of it was? I remember you three bet pocket sixes from the small blind <laughs> do, uh, do you remember the spot um i i think there were probably i think no not specifically i think there was like a raise call and no Gen generally i think in the tables that i've played with you on there were just a lot of people that were going to be folding a lot of streets yeah um if if you put pressure on their stack so uh, a lot of EV, even though it's like super high variance, is it just comes from making people fold like ninety nine percent of their range by the river. Yeah. Fair. I bluffed you a lot, yeah. by the way. I feel I feel like you've what say? I bluffed you a lot when we played. Uh yeah. Well, I had you, I, I had you down as someone that I, I felt like would fold to me a lot. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I think the, one of the things it was is that when we were in hands, you would make like really genuinely funny jokes, but the joke yeah. would be along the ilk of like, oh, okay, fucking Charlie winning pots again. All right, you can have this one again. Yeah. Um, and I, that, that kind of gives people the green light to actually just win all the pots, I think. Oh, the love of God. <laughs> So I, I would say actually, actually along the lines of the conversation we we're having beforehand, um, before we start recording, I'd say a huge, huge thing for you might be uh, working on table presence. Um, yeah. You know, you know, when I sit down and it's like, even if I'm not playing that many hands, I, I make my, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not sitting there like calculating everything, what to say. I just kind of act, but. I make it very obvious that, you know, I'm there to play poker and I'm there to just like crush everyone. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm like real confident about how I'm sitting, real confident about what I'm saying and like hands that I'm saying. And I, I don't think there are many situations where I, I would be like, hmm, damn, I'm ashamed of that play. How would you have played that person mm. sitting next to me? Um, because I really think that, subconsciously that just fucks with people's heads if, if you're just like sitting there confident sitting upright like sometimes when i'm playing the high rollers i just get another chair so i'm taller um and i, I literally i think that changes stuff so much yeah yeah um, making sure that you're the person that can be picking on other people and if someone is like oh you're picking on me you're just like i mean man it's just a game sometimes you got to pick on the weaker player just kidding just kidding something like that you know yeah um just really really kind of like hone in that that predatory attitude because poker you, you have to be like an absolute cold-blooded kill and you can't yeah. you can't have any any like sign of remorse if you stack someone or if you're picking on someone but obviously at the same time you can balance that with being a decent human being which is tough but. yeah i tend to like i like to if the if the table's right like i like to have fun and joke around but then as soon as i'm in a hand it like 
I'm just kind of very silent and quite. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, I do remember you doing that. Um, um, I don't yeah, know. So I don't like, know if, that sorry, if if that's your thing, then that's super fine to just stay stay quiet in the hand. But I, I'd say even when out of hands and when you're just like talking about the hands as as people have like the general chitter chatter, mm -hmm. just try and keep in mind that state of confidence. Yeah. Because I, I really do believe like the way you talk influences the way you think and the way you act and it's all just kind of interwoven like that. Yeah. Um, the way that people perceive you and that helps you changes your energy and stuff like that. So um yeah, I'd, I'd say for all of your live cash sessions, just having having that state of absolute confidence in what you're doing. Yeah. I I, I think results change hugely based on that. That's really interesting. Okay. Queen Jack off. Good fold. It's actually more of an open than ace five suited here, just so you know. And that's like yeah. pretty sure theory would agree with me there. Um, just because you have two cards that can hit top there. It's nice. And uh, two blockers. Yeah, I, I would in yeah. a bunch of tournaments be opening this if like the table's right. So if you're playing like the fucking Sunday million and you're down to like three tables, 100% opening this. 100% opening jack 10 off because everyone's just playing ridiculously tight. Um, and it, it's worth so much to like pick up the blinds and antis, but uh, yeah, not at the moment. So make sure you're, you're adjusting to the table. Sometimes, sometimes on like the bubble of the Sunday million, I'll be opening like seven deuce off, you know, stuff like that on, from under the gun. Um, yeah. Not saying that that will come up in the tournament that you're about to play, but just, just as an example of how ludicrous you can get. Where he's at 340? Holy shit. I don't know what to do against yeah, that. Yeah, this guy was... Okay, yeah, this guy was... I remember him now. He was a bit... I didn't quite understand. That's the first time he's opened 340, and I was like, what does this mean? Yeah, really? exactly. He's just guessing. Uh, yeah. Right. It means he's probably not folding, which is good to know. Um, so what, what, what do you think you do here? I think I jammed. Uh, yeah, I'll probably, probably just call. Hit an ace or, in a, or a jack. Uh, Hold or hit. Hold or hit. Have king, queen. Nines and trays. Damn it. Yeah. Oh, split. Split. Nice. Uh, I agree with that. Yeah. I, I think when someone opens like that, they could just be fucking around. But if it's the first time they do it, there's, let's say there's a 50% chance that they'll be doing it only with monster hands and a 50% chance they're just doing it with range. Um, mm -hmm mathematically you just don't want to be going up against a 50 percent only monsters and 50 percent normal range yeah okay I drank a lot of tea before this and i really need to pee yeah. I hope there aren't too many more hands um so i think that we will definitely uh, if you're down i assume you'll have a couple more sessions after this one um, no i don't want to see that again <laughs> fucking done with this yeah it's just been horrible <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah of course cool i i have i have the thing i know i've been like quite hard to get hold of um but i have the thing as soon as i start coaching someone i really want to like do it properly yeah lovely um, stuff and i feel like now looking at this there are a lot more adjustments that i want to go through uh have have you downloaded the snapshot app yes been, i've been looking at that yeah it's fucking brilliant yeah it's really good so sh shout out to snapshot if i'm not affiliated or anything um, so you can tell that I'm genuinely uh, do like this. People out there listening, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to put this on YouTube. I think it's good. It's really and uh, you're welcome. Free content, by the way. Could be paying for this. Uh, so yeah, Snapshot is a an incredibly good app for learning, especially getting started. But honestly, I, I've seen like pros using it. I, I've used it in high rollers every now and again. If I'm just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Six big blinds showing mid position. I fucking learn. I don't know this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just it it's not a black and white, here's what you have to do because situations change based on SEM, they change based on anti-sizes, they change based on the table, they change based on loads of stuff. Um, but it is very good if your first learning tournaments just be like, what am I meant to be shoving theoretically from 12 big blinds from the cutoff? And it'll tell you. Um, so yeah, download snapshot of everyone. When do you like it's a very, very vague question, but when do you start shoving like Yes, instead of, instead of just opening. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, it's a really hard question to answer, but let's say roughly around 12 big blinds. However, if I'm on the button and I have 20 big blinds, I'll shove deuces, I'll shove king queen, uh, I'll shove king jack, yeah. uh, probably shove ace jack and ace queen and ace king as well against most people. And the reason for that is let, let's say I'm playing like a, a high roll tournament, I'll just be opening ace king because I want to induce their ace deuces to shove. Yeah. Um, but in tournaments, where people aren't going to be just shoving their ace deuces. Uh, I wanted to shove ace king because I don't want to have to see a fucking flop with ace king mm. um, and let them, let them like, you know, realize equity with their six, seven offs or whatever. Mm. So when you're, when you're under the gun, um, probably I'll shove like, like nine big blinds, like deuces, maybe like eight big blinds. Um, probably not more than that, even though theory would probably tell you to. Although if it's a big blind ante, then you have to start shoving wider than that. Um, and then let's say you're under the gun, you have like 14 bigs. I'd probably have some on most tables, assuming the table isn't ludicrous. Let's just say you play on just like the Sunday million. I would start having a min raise range around 14 big blinds of like ace jack. Mm -hmm. And then I'd shove ace queen, ace king, uh, maybe like king queen off as well. I might, I might just decide to min raise because it looks real strong when you min raise or 40 bigs under the gun. It looks like aces. Yeah, and uh, we would also do it with aces, kings, and queens. Um, so yeah, that that is a very, very vague and brief introduction of how many big blinds to shove. But yeah, like like you said, it's a it's a difficult, it's a very vague question because it's a very difficult question to answer. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, I need to pee so bad. Uh, I probably would I probably would have bet this when checked to because yeah, at least this guy doesn't bad. have anything. Yeah. And we yeah. we probably just have the best hand. Uh, okay. Against the min bet, I don't blame you for folding. Mm. They're definitely cool as well, though. <laughs> oh my god, I need to pee, I need to pee, I need to pee. I hope you die. Oh, we're halfway through. All right, all right I'm pausing. Pause it. Uh, I also need the toilet. Oh, thank god. Okay, how do we pause recording? Okay, quit, quit the uh, give Stop up the remote control. Stop sharing somehow. Yeah. Oh, pause recording. So the que the question was we, we were talking about acting in poker and his past career and stuff. But I asked um because you, you seem like a relatively definitely spiritual person. Uh, how how does poker industry interact with your spirituality? Um, I I don't know if I'm spiritual, say, but I'm I'm very mindful. Of, I don't know if they have a similar definition. Yeah, under the definition of spirituality, I have it's kind of like somebody who's introspective and somebody who's mindful yeah. is kind of like it. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, poker has helped with balance. Um, you know, self-awareness. That's the, that's the big word. I can mm. word. Um, what am I doing now? What are my options? How am I feeling about this? What should I do next? What could I do next? And like, what shall I do kind of thing? Uh, um, and quite in a, in a tacky way as well, especially when you're learning to play cash, you know, it's not about, I read the phrase, it's not about winning hand, it's about making money. So it's like, a, basically it's a long-term goal. It's not yeah. about, oh, I need to win that fucking massive big hand so I can sit here with a big stack. It's actually about winning lots and lots of small pots as well, mainly. It's, you know, yeah. it's all the small things in life, essentially. One of the really cool things that I found poker did and does for a lot of people, but it also did for me, is that it forces you to analyze every variable of what goes on in the hands. And mm -hmm. often what happens is you make an emotional decision instead of a logical decision, and you have to work out where that came from. And that yeah. can lead down to these deep rabbit holes of, oh my God, so yeah, I, I get really aggressive when someone else at the three bet, someone else at the table is three betting me loads. And that's because I got bullied at school. And now I have to deal with that before I can get to the point where I feel comfortable to, you know, have someone three bet me loads and not spaz out. Mm. Um, and I, I think that that kind of consistent analysis, it also kind of spills into the rest of your life as well, where I, I started judging every single one of my decisions. It's like, is this plus EV? Am I doing a plus EV thing right now? Yeah. And, uh, often <laughs> the answer is definitely fucking not. <laughs> Fair enough. And also, like, I read um, a Phil Galfond quote, and he talks about how 
poker players think differently compared to other people because we're not results based. Mm. We don't think in a vacuum and you can, you can compare that to say, <clears throat> let's say I was in a relationship with someone and you know, I was being myself, but it didn't work out. You know, if I was results based, I might ask myself, Oh, maybe I should change who I am with this and with that and all that. Cause it didn't work out this time. Mm. But well, no, you know, you, 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 you obviously learn things, you know, you can make adjustments, but essentially don't think in a vacuum, don't be results based, just be yourself, carry on and then get into the next relationship or friendship or whatever. Yeah, I love it. yeah, no, that's a, that's a beautiful example. I think yeah. that 